In 2004, the Monterey Bay Aquarium kept a juvenile great white shark in captivity for a record 198 days. Since then, they have housed four other white sharks in their enormous Outer Bay exhibit. In the process, scientists and the public have gained greater insight into the lives of these magnificent animals. Well, one of the huge benefits to having a white shark here uh, at the Monterey Bay Aquarium is what we're learning uh, about the species uh, through their stays here. Uh, and that's, that's really given us a, an insight into, into these animals that we haven't had before. They're inherently very difficult animals to study. Uh, they roam the open oceans. Uh, they're hard to stay with. You can't just follow a white shark through its life. So how do you really watch an animal over time and see what it's doing? And, and this situation provides us that opportunity. We've been able to see uh, how the young are feeding, uh, how much food that they're feeding upon, how quickly they're growing, and seeing a little bit of their behaviors and their swimming behaviors in, in this environment has really been, again, insightful and new for what we're able to do. The Monterey Bay Aquarium has been successful keeping white sharks where other facilities have not in the past for a number of reasons. It'd be nice to be able to point to one particular reason as to why we've been successful, but it's really all about the entire package, the entire picture, um, starting from when we first see the animal all the way until we get the animal here in Monterey. One of the keys to the aquarium's success has been first keeping the young white sharks in an open ocean pen, evaluating their health and well-being, getting them acclimated, then gradually proceeding step by step toward putting them on exhibit. But once it gets here, this exhibit is also unique behind us, and it was initially developed for tuna. Um, and imagine you're a tuna in the open ocean there, you're not used to seeing walls, bottom, rocks, sand, ever. You're used to being completely surrounded in water for your entire life. And this exhibit uh, has been designed such that it has very round edges throughout its design so that there aren't corners, 90 degree angles, things that animals like tunas have a difficult time with. That happens to benefit our white shark quite a bit as well. Uh, so one of the challenges is first just kind of keeping up with the animal and what it wants to do and how it wants to behave and then modifying our approach based upon its behavior. Um, so we have to be able to kind of adapt what we're doing to best meet the shark's needs. And that's always a bit of a challenge on the front end. Uh, some of the other challenges are that these are animals that grow fairly quickly. Uh, at this size, they're consuming a lot of food. Uh, they're growing pretty quickly and so before too long, this animal will outgrow our exhibit and we'll have to release her. Now, there is a perception that, that white sharks are the, the unthinking, eating machine at all times. That's really quite the opposite of what they're doing. Um, our initial concerns when the animal comes here is making sure that that animal eats fairly quickly. And sometimes they choose not to actually do that for a couple of days. And they take their time, observe uh, what's going on, and really get adapted to the, to the exhibit. Uh, What's, what's interesting about them is that most people think that once a white shark is on this exhibit, it would just be eating tuna at will, grabbing tank mates whenever it, would, it wants to do that, and it does quite the opposite. Uh, usually the shark is off on its own, doing its own thing, and usually stays out of the way of other animals, and the other animals typically stay out of its way too. Probably one of the, the biggest keys uh, to the success of this program, however, has been how our public's responded. Um, we have over you know, millions of people come in, coming in the door every year here, and millions of folks have gotten to see a white shark over the years. And watching guests come through the door, approach the main window, and see the white shark pass by the window is something that's hard to explain the reaction. Uh, most people would think that the first reaction was, oh, how scary, oh, how creepy, Ugh, it looks ugly. The most common thing that I hear on guests when they first approach the window is, oh, she's beautiful. And it really allows people a different perspective, I think, than seeing the voracious killer that we're used to being seen portrayed on TV, where you see this graceful, beautiful animal that's completely in control of its environment. Seeing that face to face, people are really identifying with those animals. And most people are walking out with a completely different perspective than they had walking in. And really that's the key. I find that most people, when they have an understanding for what the, what the issues are, and they're able to appreciate an animal that they just saw at a facility like ours, 
a lot of times that will trigger a change in behavior and that's what we're all about is helping to educate people so that perhaps we can all change our behaviors a little bit which will in the end improve the health of our oceans which are critical to all of our survival. Once the white sharks outgrow their temporary home at the aquarium, they are tagged and carefully released back into the wild. The information provided by these satellite tags will help marine scientists further our understanding of these mysterious creatures and help expand our knowledge and appreciation of their watery world.